There you go. Hello, everybody. I am joined by Andrew Bongiorno, who's most known for his role as Tommy in Tommy and Mafia. Why did I just hesitate there? <laughs> what the fuck it's is because it's been done before. You're like, wait, which bloody Mafia is this? <laughs> I know, there's, there's too many, too many to think of. Yeah. Yes, this yeah. young man is Tommy Angelo from Mafia Definitive Edition. Hi, Hi. everyone. <laughs> How you doing? Good. How you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Good, good. Is there a little bit of a delay? Or... I think there might be. I hope not. Okay, no, I think we're good. I think we're good. Okay, I really hope not. That would have been the worst thing in the world. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, because sometimes my internet connection can be a little bit iffy. But anyway, all right, here we are. We're here. How do we you are. feel? Um, Mafia's one years old now. <laughs> Is it weird? It's crazy. Yeah, I can't believe it's it's really strange to think that because it feels like it was about four months ago that the game got released. Yeah. Um, the only thing, the only way that I can kind of judge the time between when it was released and now is the fact that when it was released, I couldn't even drive down the street in the first level. <laughs> Whereas now I'm like, I can finish the whole thing on classic level. <laughs> so I've spent a little bit of time on the game. <laughs> yeah. On classic. Oh my God. I'm not even, I've done medium, like the normal difficulty. I've not got past hard yet. I'm too scared. Oh, girl, to be you got to get on that. <laughs> yeah. No, I um, I actually to celebrate the anniversary yesterday. I um, I jumped on and played right through. Well, I didn't play the whole thing. I played my favorite levels, which there's about five of. I sk I skipped about two of my favorite levels, but anyway. But I finished them all on classic and got right through to um the death of art. What was the race like on classic? Oh, okay. All right, all right. Full disclosure, I cannot finish the race on classic. I can finish it on hard, but if, if you, have you tried it on classic? No, I have to. I played it on normal the other day, and I still struggled. <laughs> uh, okay, give it to give it to me on normal, no problem. Um, give it to me on hard, and I might need about three shots maybe to try and get it done. Put it put it on classic. I will be there for the rest of the year trying to bloody finish that level. So I just, yeah, after I'd finished it on easy, normal and hard, I got to classic and went, yeah, this is not going to happen. Like I seriously, I tried and I tried, I tried for a good probably week and I was spending several hours a day, maybe two, two hours a day for a week. And so 14 hours of trying and I was like, nah next <laughs> i just skipped the level <laughs> i ended up just skipping it i'm like i don't think i don't think i'm ever going to be good enough to finish this level on classic so oh, that's, that's my achilles heel do you, which is shameful just... right because Tommy's the driver you know yeah He's every time you're like you're the best wheel man in town i'm like holding my controller like no <laughs> 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 i think you need somebody else <laughs> yeah it's like uh, you ain't seen what I can do. <laughs> We're all in trouble here. <laughs> Delieri so, put me in the bottom of a lake right now. <laughs> do you play many video games? Are you much of a gamer? Or was it just because it's your I, game? Well, actually, um, I grew up loving video games to the point where I was a little bit addicted, especially as a teenager. And when I say a little bit, I'm talking, I would play until the sun was rising. And then I'd be like oh shit I better turn off the computer and get an hour of sleep before my alarm goes off and I got to go to school that kind of <laughs> oh addiction. my god yeah so I was uh, I was probably averaging about three hours of sleep a night but um I used to be addicted to some pretty classic games I mean okay if you want to go all the way back I'm going to give away my age now because it's really interesting what people think my age is um but let me give you a hint I remember using tapes in Commodore 64s. Do you know what a Commodore 64 is? I've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, so my first cassette tape was, uh, audio tape was Michael Jackson's Thriller. Mm -hmm. and, my, and my first tape for a game was actually a driving game. I can't even remember what it was now actually no oh my god i skipped i skipped a part of my childhood oh i might need to talk to a, um, a therapist about that i was about to say skipped, are you okay yeah. <laughs> i think i'll be all right um no i skipped the part maybe maybe i'm blocking this out 
that tennis game. You know, remember that? It was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pong. What's it called? Pong. Pong, yes. As in like ping pong, pong. Right, yeah. exactly. So we used to have this weird little controller thing and you'd plug it into the TV and the TV was a box, of course. It yeah. wasn't like a flat screen, beautiful thing that just hangs on the wall like a painting. And, um, and we used to play that, me and my two brothers. I've got two older brothers. They're four and five years older than me, so yeah. Um, I did have another healthy addiction, actually. I think I would call it healthier. Um, uh, when my, oh, this is getting a little deep now, but when my grandfather was um, battling cancer and he eventually lost the battle, um, we inherited his pool table and my brothers taught me how to play pool. And so that was a game that I tended to be addicted to, to the point where I would get blisters on my hands from playing pool so wow. much. Oh, that's yeah, and fun fact, fun fact, being from a Gaelic kind of background yourself, I um, I was in, where was I? Munich. Yeah, I was in Munich. And I met the guy who was ranked number three in Ireland. Now, I know you're Scottish. He was number three in Ireland. And we played best out of three. And I managed to beat him on the, I think it was the final I think it was the final game. I beat him in one of the games. And I was like, I don't care that you beat me best out of three. I beat you once. <laughs> and, and you're number three in Ireland. I'm taking it. <laughs> How old so, are yeah. you? Uh, oh, I don't want to give away. <laughs> I was 25. <laughs> I was 25. I was backpacking through Europe. And um, I'm not going to tell you what year that was. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Be, I like that. It'd be some mystery. Um, but no, but Warcraft, um, uh, I loved Warcraft. I, I played it all the time. This was before it went on the net. Okay. Mm. So I played Warcraft one, two, and three. Then it went, then I've played Starcraft. Right. So I loved all those kind of, do you know Starcraft? It's by Blizzard Entertainment as well. Well, uh, you, well, you know Blizzard, Warcraft, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, so Blizzard, Blizzard made Warcraft and they made Starcraft. I know Warcraft. I don't think I know Starcraft, but I assume it's the same, but like Star Wars-y. Pretty much. Pretty much. It uses a lot of cr cross... Um, yeah, it kind of crosses a lot of different storylines from a lot of different science fiction movies, including Alien, uh, Star Wars, all sorts of stuff. Well, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. Okay. What I was yeah. wanting to ask you was, um, obviously, I find out stupidly by me being an idiot I asked you if you actually were Italian or if that was the stage name <laughs> <laughs> did you ask me that yeah I remember it I was like I need to ask you is your last name a stage is your name a stage name because it's way too perfect for the role you just played <laughs> yeah of course yeah, yeah yeah oh man I mean if you look at the list of cast the cast list for the oh god yeah that's to that that game I mean Everyone who was in that cast were born to play those roles. <laughs> it's yeah. Crazy. Like Bonaventura. How much of a great last name is that? Mm -hmm. Donny Bonaventura. <laughs> That's so cool. So yeah, yeah. did you know anything about the original Mafia when you first started filming? Um, no, actually, it's, it's a story I've told before. So apologies to anyone who's already heard this. But when I, when actually, we found out once we were all cast and got in the same room to do a table read for the script, which was 186 pages long, by the way. Um, we, uh, we found out that we'd all been told in our initial audition that it was an audition for a feature film. Mm -hmm. And then when I got my call back, it wasn't until I got the call back and I met Hayden and he admitted to me that it was a, um, it was a, a video game and I'd never worked on video games and I love video games, but I didn't know what that meant. I was like, okay, is that two weeks work or a month's work? Or... And then of course, you know, probably a total of about five months later, um, we finished making it. So wow. it's pretty awesome. I mean, not five chronological months, but if you add up all the time that I personally spent on it, I think the programmers were spending, they spent, like over a year mm -hmm. um but per personally us as actors we spent about yeah about uh, probably five months if you include all the uh, the sessions in the in the booth uh doing voiceover as well as 
on the uh, the volume actually creating it with the um, performance capture stuff. That's that's really quick for a video game. It was an amazing. Well, it was an amazing experience. Well, actually, it's interesting you say that because um, uh, Dara O'Farrell, the director, the performance director, he uh, was was explaining to me that it's very rare. He's 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 worked on a lot of Star Wars um, games and stuff. I mean, he's been doing video games forever and a day. He knows the the industry back to front. And me being a freshie, I'm like, oh, this is cool. You know, we're doing five day weeks it's like shooting a, a lead role on a as a series regular on a tv show right and he goes he goes don't get don't get used to that that's not normal like normally you might shoot a block of like say for example one of the first um one of the first missions we shot was actually the farm mission okay and um, so he said, for example, you would shoot like the farm mission and then you'd go and have several weeks or a month where you'd go away and whatever, you might not have a phone call for a while while the programmers went and made the farm mission and then they'd be ready to make the next mission. So they'd call you in and go, Hey, can you come in for these dates? And then you'd come in for those dates, you'd shoot all that and so on and so forth. So he said, mafia definitive edition was a very unusual, unique, um, way of making a video game because we basically were shot we were shooting Monday to Friday every week for three months straight like I remember <laughs> I remember when I went to check in at the hotel um, on the, the first day back so we'd already shot a couple of weeks in 2018 god I feel so long ago um, 2018 and then we'd been flown over to the Czech Republic and we'd done all that kind of stuff. And then I went off to Australia to have a holiday uh, for about a month, five weeks, I think. And then we, I got flown back to San Francisco. I checked into the hotel and they, and they, they were like, name, blah, blah, blah. And they go, oh, you're staying with us for 72 nights. And I'm like, oh, am I? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. Okay. I guess I am. Um, where do I sign up for the um, rewards program? <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. So by the end of it, I got quarter of a million points, which I'm now eligible for like two weeks of free four-star accommodation in Marriott Resorts. <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> yeah, it's that's, pretty that's awesome. Good that. That's good that you're allowed to take points as well. I thought that was good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So it was an amazing experience. I mean... It was pretty cool. Pretty so, cool indeed. I imagine you were given a bit of a background on Tommy. What did you think of him initially when you read his whatever about him? <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting because they always give you a character breakdown um, of what the character is supposed to sort of, the different traits of the character and his attitudes towards things and stuff. Um, what Hayden very specifically said to all of us at that table read was he said, hey, guys, so I don't know how many of you know this, but this is a remake of an original. He said, we're going to show you some clips to give you an idea. And I think one of the cl clips he showed us was the, um, um, I think it was one of the very, I think it was the first mission, actually. I think it was when um, Tommy ends up, you know, meeting Paulie and Sam and they jump mm -hmm. in the cabin. Um, but he said, uh, after that, that clip had finished. He said, look guys, we want to make this from the ground up. We want it to be completely new. We don't want you to go and Google um, the original game. We don't want you to try and copy anything from the original game. We want you to bring a new angle to this, um, which is why we cast you. We loved what you did in your auditions. So just build on that. And so, yeah, none of us looked at, I mean, I didn't, I just looked at what he showed us. I didn't look at anything else. Um, and I'm, I have to be careful too, because if I start looking at stuff that's already been made, I grew up as a, a part of my, part of growing up for me was being a musician. I play piano, I play trumpet, I sing. Um, and so I have a very musical ear. So if I start hearing someone say something, I'll start to say it the way they say it. Oh, and so I have okay. to be very careful if I see, <laughs> yeah. So if I'm saying lines. And I've seen someone else say the same lines. There's a good chance I'll end up saying those lines the same way they said the lines. So I just have to just like stick clear of that, just stick with my intentions for my character and go like that. Yeah. yeah. 
So was there any part where you kind of disagreed with Tommy's actions or agreed with Tommy's actions? Sorry, disagreed or agreed with what? His, Tommy's actions throughout the game. Oh, his actions. Um, oh, look, uh, the, <laughs> the main thing you get told, yeah, yeah. No. Um, no, the main thing you get told when you train with acting, and I've done quite a bit of training in England and Australia and America. Um, and if you're playing someone who could be potentially considered as a bad guy, you don't judge the character as, as a bad person. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, even though Tommy obviously kills a lot of people um, and he's part of a, the mafia and let's face it, no one in the mafia is really a good person. I mean, I'm sure they've got certain parts of their personality that's good. Maybe it's great to be married to them. I don't know, but <laughs> or be their son or their daughter. Um, but the thing you have to find as an actor is reasons why. And I think that a great example of that is Breaking Bad, the TV show. Oh, yeah. And you go, Brian Cranston's unbelievable in that show. But as you go on, you go, wow, this guy's really turning into a bad person. But if mm. you look at the reasons why he was doing what he was doing, that's kind of what keeps the audience on side on his side and you sort of start to you're like wait what am i why am i going for this guy who's making crystal meth <laughs> like this is just wrong but you, you sort of do you're like oh my god he's suffering cancer and he just wants to have enough money for his family so that when he passes away inevitably they're going to be taken care of and looked after and again it's all about the family right um but he he just um yeah he just you just go with it because you understand why and so for an actor playing a bad bad guy in my case a bad guy um you don't go oh that's the wrong thing to do or that's a bad thing or that's morally incorrect you just go okay why why are we doing this and you go with the reasons and hayden as well oh my god hayden writes amazing scripts i would if, if someone said to me hey can you audition for this Hayden Blackman thing? I'd be like, yep, absolutely. Don't even need to read it. Let's just do it because the guy writes gold. His scripts are amazing. <laughs> I just loved every word I got to say. It was so good. <laughs> I don't know if you saw, but I actually did a commentary on like the entire of Tommy Angelo's life. And um, Where did you see that? I, I did it. I made my own video. Oh, you did it? Yeah. Oh, did you? All right, yeah. okay. And um, I made it from what I understood is that Tommy has always been, I know like the ending monologue is very obvious that he was family driven, but yeah. um, I think he was never opposed to hard work. And maybe that's how he saw the mafia at first. And then like, but I don't think he knew how much killing was going to be involved in it. But because yeah. I always look yeah. at how much he hesitated when he was about to kill somebody or whatever. And, you mm -hmm. know, Polly said rightly, that's what's going to get you killed is if you keep hesitating. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah, that's um, that was something that's tough to bring across, I think, also. Maybe because it was a video game, um, I really wanted to try and push that side of Tommy where he's... And, and we spoke a lot in depth about that with, um, with both Hayden and Dara, the director, about how, you know, Tommy's really essentially a good person, but he's fallen into this life. He's fallen into that life, mm. Yeah, and because of the depression, and the Great Depression that happened in America at the time and people were desperate. And when you're desperate, you do whatever it takes just to get by. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I think um, it's just, yeah, it was, it, was, it was difficult to show those, that side of his character because there's so much that he does do, that he goes ahead and he's like mm -hmm. assassinating and doing all sorts of stuff. But I think the good, the good thing is they have this thing in, in script writing called Save the Cat. And in The Matrix, they, they took it quite literally because I don't know if you remember in The Matrix, there's the black cat that comes along and then he sees the black cat again. And it's like, oh yeah, that's deja vu. That's a glitch in The Matrix. So the idea is that if, if the main character saves, like metaphorically saves a cat or saves somebody then it brings the audience on the side and you have to do it quite early in the story for the audience to be on the side of this character and then once they see that this character has a three-dimensional personality 
then they they go along with it and so um i think for tommy there's several times in the script especially when um when he lets frank go and when he lets michelle the prostitute go mm-hmm. um those are those are a lot of really good opportunities to show that hey this guy's not all bad he's actually a pretty decent guy he's just mm-hmm. um a little confused and has to do what he's got to do to get by so I was thinking that about Sam actually, now thinking of it, like obviously Sam is, spoiler alert, our um, main antagonist, or I guess our main pa- antagonist. I was actually thinking about that. Who is the main antagonist? Is it him or is it Morello? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of both, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It switches, so doesn't was, it? Yeah, because it's like he's like, you have to save Michelle because, you know, she's a good girl. She needs to be saved. And then on the very last scene, he's like, yeah, you saved the whore too. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> Yeah. I was like, oh, it's exactly. all coming apart now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it's um yeah, it's like, come on, dude, that was your idea. And I, I think that was great that Hayden threw that in there. It's um was that in the original the about the whole Michelle thing or is that a new do you know I, I have believe, you played the original? Yeah, that mission was in there. Um I don't right. know what the what the story was. I don't know if it's exactly the same or okay. I actually don't know. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's quite clever because um, because it kind of I think it uh, I think that particular statement that Sam says is um, because there's this whole thing I've noticed on social media about oh are you on Team Sam or are you on Team Tommy or which team are you on you know it's like did did Tommy make the wrong decision when he was he only had his family obviously he did what he did because he had his family in mind and he was he wanted them to be safe so he knew he had to get out of out of the um the life out of the family um but uh but at the same time you've got sam who is loyal to a fault and will do whatever it takes to be completely loyal um so then it's this kind of push and pull so i think it's important to have that it's like Oh, but you let Michelle go. It's like, yeah, dude, that was your idea. <laughs> so oh. hmm, I'm, I might have liked you up until now, but now you've just said that. So hmm. <laughs> where do we go from here? So you make your own decisions. And that's what's great about the game, I think, because there's all these people who are like, oh, what, what was Tommy thinking, man? He, he betrayed the family. Like, you don't do that. And then everyone, everyone else is like, yeah, did you see what Sam said to Tommy? That was a, that was a low ball. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, so it's pretty clever. Yeah, I think even, I feel like such an idiot every time we do this, but like I, I've played Mafia 2, I think a lot more than I've played 1, I don't know why, but um, I always go back to that last scene in Mafia 1 where Tommy, you know, he meets his maker or whatever. Every time it came up with like Vito and then his line, I was like, right, okay, and then the first time I played it, I had no idea for the whole time we were playing that Vito, if you know what I mean. All right, yeah, 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 okay. So like, so... we're playing... Vito and Mafia too the whole way through and then I'm like Vito's also the guy that sent the kill on Tommy or whatever but then yeah when you actually go into that scene I was kind of like wait a minute is that Tommy's that's, hands? that's Tommy it, yeah yeah isn't that great I love the way they link together it's so cool and that the chronology of it to go from prohibition and then into that next era and then into the era after that it's mm-hmm. so clever I love the way they did that have you yeah. played the other Mafia games? I haven't, actually. I'm, oh. um, I know I shouldn't admit to it. Yes, absolutely, I have. Yeah, they're great. They're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I um, love Mafia, no, too. Definitely. Yeah, are. everyone every, everyone brags about, like, they go on about Mafia, too. Apparently, it's pretty damn good. I think I need to give it a shot. I love yeah, the trailer I mean- for it. My God, it's so cool. I interviewed um, Rick Pascalone, who's um, Vito in Mafia, and he is just, he's great. He's such a good yeah, guy. Yeah, I've met, I've met Rick. Yeah, I've met him. He's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I've went deep into that Mafia 2 conversation there. But, um, yeah, I, I really love the games. Like, when I first, when I first saw, I first played Mafia 3 first. I don't know why. But I was kind of had on that assumption that the other games are probably a lot older, so maybe they're not the active way out and then I realized there's a trilogy literally boxed up you can get it and then eventually I bought it thinking I don't know am I going to enjoy this I wasn't so sure about Mafia 3 and then I played it and I was like oh hold on I like this I like the controls it's very 
like the controls around me GTA, so it was easy for me to get into. And then the story was yep. great. The acting was obviously great. So, oh, uh, good. Yeah. Uh, that's great. That's good. I'll have to. <laughs> yeah, I have to give it a shot. I um, there's so many games I've got to try now because since doing like since working for 2K, I've made all these friends. Actually, um, one of my acting teachers ended up as um, as Dutch in Red Dead Redemption. F off. You're joking me. Yeah, Ben, ben Davis. You know Ben Davis? Of course I know Ben Davis. <laughs> yeah, so he was my acting teacher. Yeah, so when he was shooting uh, Red Dead and it was coming out, I'd started shooting Mafia and I met up with him for some drinks. And he was talking about the new release of his video game. And I'm like, man, that's the biggest video game on the planet at the moment. Like, you guys did the biggest opening weekend ever. You're breaking all these records and smashing it out of the park. And um, I said, you know, tell, tell me all about it. And he goes, oh, man, it was an amazing experience. And we were sort of comparing what, what we'd been through with what he went through. And it was just great to talk to him about it all because he taught me acting when I first got to L.A., and, and then all of a sudden it's like, now we're both in video games for 2K. How cool is this? <laughs> so, he's yeah, he's a great guy. Life. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I would love to interview Ben. I just feel like having a conversation with him would just be so interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't forget. I mean, he's just such a presence um, when you talk to Ben. Yeah, there's no... Like, even if you're in a room filled with people and Ben's talking to you, you don't even notice anyone else is around because the guy is just such a force of, he's a tour de force of, I mean, he just, he's wonderful to talk to and he's very direct and you just listen to every single word he says and he's got a lot to, a lot of really smart stuff to say. He's a good bloke with a lot yeah. of knowledge. It's funny because like my audience here is mainly Red Dead watchers because all of my videos have been all my interviews have been red dead interviews oh um, really i genuinely think ben's the only one that i've not interviewed out of that entire cast <laughs> no way all right you've got to send me a list of who you've interviewed i will send it to ben and we'll see if we can make that <gasps> if you andrew <laughs> i'm not i'm not making that. promises it's up to ben but no um, but that's true i that's will true. certainly i will bring that to his attention for sure Awesome. I think I, I booked a cameo with him once and I just mentioned it like it would be really cool if he would. And he's like, yeah, let's get it to happen. But I never did. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's, he's great. He's really good. Um, I know we really went on a tangent there, but I just got so excited when you mentioned his name. <laughs> um, well, yeah. I mean, that's well, because we were talking about like how I've got all these bloody video games that I need to try. Um, Red Dead being one of them. But um, <gasps> do, you know who Ma do you know who Martin Copping is? another Aussie oh I feel like I've heard the name but so he was I, I mean he, I think his big sort of start he's done several video games but his main start was in um uh what's it called Siege 6 uh what's it called um do you, do you know the one I'm talking about it's it's a very different type of game to what what we're talking about here um something Six Siege Anyway, he's he's just been he's just been in the new release of the the brand new um ah now all the names are escaping me um oh I used to play it all the time with the zombies um Black Ops uh all right okay what's it called um Black Ops there's a lot oh, now I'm forgetting is it, is it Black, <laughs> Black Ops Alive? no is it I don't know no 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 um Black Ops is is the uh, is one of the versions of the game. God, everyone who's watching this now would be like, are you kidding me? I, <laughs> <laughs> I am now Googling it because I feel really bad that I've forgotten this name. Just um, just for the players at home, I've just had a couple of glasses of red wine. So that is my excuse. That's your excuse. Um, Call of Duty. Oh, my God. How did I not remember Call of Duty? It's one of the biggest games. Oh, it was I've just made. Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, Call of Duty Black Ops. I used to play the zombies all the time. I love that game. Zombies are fun because you get all these different different guns and you start to open up different parts of the mansion and you're running through hallways shooting zombies and trying to get away from them. It's good fun. Um, but anyway, so um, Martin, uh, Marty Copping, my buddy Marty has, shout out to Marty, hello. Um, he has just, he's in the new uh, Call of Duty release. 
uh, the game that was just released, I think only a couple of weeks ago, this month, yeah, not maybe. Long ago. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah, but it's um, not. I'm not like insulting him, but it's not my kind of game. I'm not into like the kind of first person. I'm more of a third person shooter, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Well, so how do you find this one then? Because it's not, it's not too far off that, really, is it? I mean, there's version. There's sort of. I think game, it's. It sounds so stupid, but I get kind of motion sick when you're kind of just walking about, you just see the gun and then you're shooting people yeah. whether than, you know, with Tommy, you're kind of like over his shoulder shooting people. You kind of see his right, head. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, okay, I see what you mean. So rather like than I, like... I, I tried to play it. cyberpunk and physically good at because I was not only with all the glitches and everything, I was just like, this is physically, I can't, I feel really yeah. ill. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried cyberpunk. I hear it's pretty damn amazing. I mean, obviously, um, you didn't thoroughly yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> it depends how you look at it. Like, I don't know. I've not played it in a while, but when I played it, I think there was not a lot of patch updates or whatever because there was a lot of bugs and I felt like I was getting chased by yeah. police every two seconds for not doing anything. And, like, my, <laughs> my car was flying and stuff, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on here. I'm not even touching it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, maybe if you didn't have the new patch, then maybe that's a... Maybe that's a harsh judgment of the game. Because I know when they first released it, it wasn't really ready, right? And then they sort of unreleased it and then they released it again. Is that kind of yeah, how it happened? I think, I think I bought it um, not long after it was re-released. I can't actually remember, but yeah, I was right. I was playing it around the time there were so many bugs. And I imagine there'll be updates now, but it's just been that long. To me, it seemed like they were... Um... Oh, you've got the friends. You've got three furry friends back there, don't you? Yeah, I think I've been quite for a while, but it sounds a bit... <laughs> I saw your Instagram video and I didn't know you got a big one as well. There's two little ones, right? Yeah, we've got a black lab and two Jack Russells. Um, ah. our, black, our black lab's like 10 years old now. She's an old girl. Um, and then our two Jack Russells are named after Scottish. We have a Scottish um, sitcom called Still Game. And it's named after two of the characters from there. And it's just it's hilarious. Like every time we oh, yeah? say something, it's so funny. <laughs> that's, um, that's great does, does, does uh, your dog drink to... whiskey hmm? oh, does your dog, dog get into whiskey? the hooch <laughs> yeah. well, we're going to get that dog to the hooch <laughs> my, my black lab actually loves um, she loves like wine and beer like if somebody like left their glass like on the floor the dog's straight for it <laughs> that sounds amazing that's my kind of dog actually maybe it's not my kind of dog I'd rather I'd rather drink in the whiskey because I'm more of a wine, a red wine drinker myself. Mm. He's getting mm. on well with my mom. With my mom, he's getting on uh, well with her. <laughs> yeah, will she bring yeah. the hooch or I gotta bring the hooch? We gotta bring in oh, the I Canadian. Hooch. <laughs> <laughs> as long as um, the stoolies don't start telling on it. <laughs> I was thinking about this the other day. Um, or no, it happened. Somebody shared it yesterday, and it was the behind the scenes moment where Don chucks the money at you and it hits you on the head oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and I wrote that comment about uh, you've been trying to let's be honest you, you were hoping to hit me on the head for several months before that <laughs> yeah <laughs> did you have more moments like NXT. that where there was just these kind of accidents or just moments where you lost yourself oh, look, there were probably plenty but it was so long ago now I'm trying to think um a lot of them actually happened off off uh, off screen really like when we got got to have lunch breaks and stuff jeremy luke is one of the funniest people you'll ever meet the guy who plays paulie bali um but he oh my god he doesn't even try to be funny which is one of the reasons why he's so damn hilarious because yeah. he's just he just is he's just hilarious he's so funny and um yeah that we've we've often talked about the uh, the ravioli on the plate thing where um, where Don DePetta, who plays Sam, had uh, we had this amazing ravioli for lunch one day, and you can imagine you can imagine a bloody a cast full of Italians. First of all, we all love food because we're bloody Italian. Come on. Then um, on top of that, you've got this amazing ravioli with this bolognese, and. Uh, and so Don fills his plate, sits down, and then I think he had to get up to go get a drink or, or 
maybe some Parmesan or Reggiano or something. And um, and so while he's gone getting whatever it is that he had to get, Paul, <laughs> I was going to say Paulie, Jeremy um, just starts grabbing a couple of things off his plate and eating them. And uh, and then Don gets back and being the true Italian that he is, he knows exactly what's on his plate and what should be there and what's now not there. So <laughs> he just went crazy and it became this big thing. And I, I mean, you kind of had to be there, but... It was just hilarious because um, the two of them, their relationship in real life was so much like their relationship in the game, oh, like that friendship. Good. Yeah, and, and it's carried on since, yeah. since the game uh, finished. In fact, um, we've, all, we've all been going out, well, when I was in America, I'm not in America at the moment, but um, while I was living there, um, the, uh, we went out for dinners and all sorts of stuff, so... Yeah, but, but then about, obviously... uh, I know you guys are were like the three main characters, so you had to have that kind of relationship. What about you and Bella? Were you close as well? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, unfortunately, because of the lack of number of scenes, I mean, she got more than the original. Um, oh, yeah. That Sarah was like non existent. Sarah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was great, actually. Um, yeah, speaking of which, because um, Nicole uh, Sandoval, who's, who was our producer, um, she really wanted to, and it was great to have this female influence on, on the game, right? Because all of a sudden you had this more of a respectful, different angle of, to take in, in that relationship. So like I said, I mean, I haven't played the original, I haven't watched any clips and Nicole was very disappointed that in the original, that Sarah didn't get much of a, much screen time to sort of get to know who she was. And also it's, it's such an important part of the storyline because it's so important for Tommy. I mean, yeah. the, the very reason he does everything he does, like halfway through the game, he's in love with this woman and he marries her and then they start to have kids and he's like, I need to get out of this life. It's the whole reason. So if you don't develop his relationship with Sarah, you don't really understand. You're like, oh, so he just, well, he just, he just like double crossed the Don. And it's like, yeah, no, but he had a real reason. So that was great because um, Nicole really, really pushed for that, um, for that storyline and, and to make sure that Bella, well, Sarah's, the character of Sarah, got, um, got more of a, yeah, just more screen time and, and got, the audience got to know who Sarah was a bit more. Um, but having said that, because um, it's interesting because when we were shooting, obviously, uh, Sam and Paulie, like uh, Don and and um, Jeremy were around all the time because they're such a huge part of the actual game play itself. Mm. And the thing that uh, Bella had was she had a lot of lines. She had some really great scenes, but because she's not as much in the gameplay, she wasn't around when we were shooting as much. So I didn't get to know her that well, but we did, we did get to know each other. Um, but yeah, not as, not as well as I got to know uh, Jeremy and Don. So. Yeah. So was there any moments, like, was there any conversation or dialogue parts that you found particularly difficult? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I'm so glad you asked that. Oh, my God. Okay. So this was a tough thing, not just for me, but mainly for me, but for everyone who had, kind of had to say it. So we had a dialect coach and she's wonderful and she does, she's really studious and re researched the hell out of the Chicago Italian specific dial dialect for prohibition times. So as mm. you can see from the game, it's a very specific way of talking, which isn't really used that much anymore, um, which is another reason why I love Hayden's script because he himself did a hell of a lot of research and can just write the way they used to speak back in Prohibition time. But to answer your question, going to. So you think about the way we say going to these days. It's like, oh, I'm going to go to the store. You just say gonna, right? You don't really say, I'm going to go to the store. Oh, well, maybe you do as a Scott. I don't know. Do you? I'm going to the shops. I've gone. You, you kind of gone. I'm going to the shops. Gone to the shops. Yeah. Gone to the shops. Yeah. Okay. So that's actually interesting you say that because that's a little bit closer to the way they said it in Prohibition times in Chicago Italian um, was, yeah, we weren't allowed to say gonna. So it's like, you know, when he says, um, 
if you saps aren't careful, you're going to end up in wooden overcoats. Okay, so that's a gonna. But you don't say gonna there. You got to say going to. If you saps aren't careful, you're going to end up in wooden overcoats. So going to. Not gonna. You're not gonna end up in wooden overcoats. You're going to end up in wooden overcoats. <laughs> yeah, so it's, so it's, that was, like, it's a slang term, isn't it? Gonna. That's yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's basically turning two words into one, which we tend to use a lot. Well, I know that Australia and Australians and Americans use a lot, um, but it sounds like the Scots say something else. What what what, what do you say? Gunta, gunta. I'm going to. What the did shop. you say? Me? I'm, I'm going going, to the, going to the shop. Yeah. Going to the shop. Yeah. Okay. So you still say going. You don't really say gonna. Like they don't use that. I think, in, in, I think in conversation, like you can slip it out. And just not think anything of it. But nine times out of ten, if somebody like you just asked me, how would you say it? I'd say it the proper way rather than me actually right. Like, <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. No, because it's interesting. Um, like when when uh, you do training with acting, especially for screen, theatre is very specific. Like, like you have to say every word the way it's written. Whereas mm -hmm. with screen, it's kind of an unwritten rule that it's okay to make it your own. So if it's written as I'm going to the shops, you don't have to say I'm going to the shops. You can say I'm going to, I'm going to the shops or I'm going to go to the shops. Mm. Yeah. Going to go as opposed to going to go. Yeah. You just make it natural for yourself for the screen. Mm. I have to, to take my hat off to you when um, <clears throat> that ending monologue that you did at like literally the last words of the game I, that got me and like I and I don't mean this to insult you but like there's times when I was playing the game when your accent really threw me off like I showed you that clip of me just taking the mic that one day but <laughs> <laughs> yeah what, what what threw you off like um I can try to remember think which clip at times it could just be really strong and I was like Jesus like this guy's Australian you can do that <laughs> Like, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Did, did you struggle did you struggle to understand some of it like was it no no not at all I think um oh, okay I think because I, I was researching you before and I looked at some of your reels where you kind of did play the kind of American Italian Chicago kind of voice and it wasn't as strong but I suppose it's a different time era so it would have been stronger right yeah 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 um it was interesting after we finished those um like the, the four months on the volume shooting that game and using that accent probably more than I was using my natural accent. Um, when I had to audition after that, where they didn't want that type of accent, I would automatically slip into it. Like it stays with you for a very long mm -hmm. time. Um, and so my next job after that was um, Narcos for Netflix. Uh -huh. uh, which, yeah, which I, I love that show. Um, and I remember doing the, the, the screen test, the, uh, the self tape for it and just going, what am I doing? I keep, I keep sounding like, I keep sounding like Tommy. I got to stop sounding like Tommy. This is a new character. It's not Tommy. So, and I was playing a lawyer. Um, anyway, so yeah, it was just really hard to sort of shake that, that accent, especially because uh, uh, any American accent in general, obviously is not my native accent. It's not my natural way to speak um because i'm australian so so when i slip into any type of american that's the one i automatically go for now because i spent so much time doing it yeah yeah so, so. i know as i said like i've seen some of your like your reels and you have done a kind of not the same characters obviously but the same kind of accent very similar do you feel like sometimes mm. you can be a bit typecast because you're this italian Australian. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. My my brother was making a joke about that uh, just a couple of days ago because uh, I had an audition for a mafia bus um, oh. <laughs> a couple of days ago. I'm not allowed to talk about what it is or, or what it was for, but um, I mean, I guess I can say it was for TV. Uh, but yeah, I told my brother that I had this audition. He goes, "Oh, cool. What was it for?" And I said, "Oh, it was for this mafia mob bus." And he goes. Oh, dude, you are so like you are just getting typecast left, right, and center now. And I said, yeah. Ever since I moved to America, I think fifty percent, oh, maybe maybe forty percent, at least a third, <laughs> maybe thirty-three point three recurring. At least a third of of the uh, the roles that I've played have been Italian mafioso kind of roles. Yeah, like Live by Night, the Ben Affleck movie. Mm -hmm. I was playing a. Um, 
I was playing a hitman in that for the mafia, so that was a bit of fun. And I got to learn. I got to shoot real Tommy guns, which was oh, great. Nice. Actually, yeah, I got to use my experience from that film to bring to mafia. Actually, so when when I was talking with Dara about different things, like even just the way you handle the guns and the fact that they used to shoot from the hip back then, so they just spray bullets across a room, right? Whereas um, now it's very, you know, people who are trained, for example, are very specific. So they might be like, yeah, you know, like holding it here or, yeah, or holding it so that you can actually see where the bullets are going to go. But back then they're just like, yeah, just shooting from the head. It's the dog's money, not mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but I mean, even those guns, like on the set of Live by Night, you'd shoot one magazine would take about five seconds and you'd be empty and you've just shot 50 bullets in five seconds. Oh my God. Mm. Yeah. It's nuts. It's, it shoots like 10, 10 bullets a second or something stupid. And they, those were real classic um, antique guns. We were using real Tommy guns from prohibition era. So, and wow. they got jammed. They jammed so many times. They'd be like, and action. And we'd be like, Oh, hang on. <laughs> and they'd be like, you need to pull the trigger. And I'm like, I was pulling the trigger. <laughs> They're like, okay, it's jammed. Let's fix it. <laughs> so yeah. Well, you said it. that you've played the the game on classic mode. Does that do, do, do the same thing? Apparently, you can lose your ammo, or it can like, or it can yeah, off, yeah. So that's slightly different. Yeah. So what I'm talking about is just like the magazines would run out really quickly if you left mm. them. Like, I, I guarantee it. I don't think that the mafioso guys back in the prohibition times would have left their finger on the trigger, because I mean, you can't just keep. I mean, you'd have to carry you know, what, 12 magazines, which weigh ridiculous amounts of weight. Oh, in your pocket. A minute worth of shooting. Yeah, just to do 60 seconds worth of shooting. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, um, I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, the, the, the classic mode is more about, yeah, just making it more difficult. It's, it's not as much as being realistic. Like, oh, I understand, that, yeah, like when you take out, when you put a new magazine in classic mode, if you had four bullets left, those four bullets are now just gone. They're disappeared. So, mm -hmm. like, if you had four in the chamber but 50 backup and you put the 50 in, you don't have 54. You've just got the 50 now. You've just you. sacrificed those mm -hmm. four. Yeah. So don't – yeah, when you get to classic mode, don't get used to just re reloading because once you get to classic mode, <laughs> that's the mistake I made. Once I got to classic mode, I'm like, why do I keep running out of bullets? This is ridiculous. And then I realized, I'm like, oh, my God, I just had, like – 45 bullets in, and and then I pressed reload and I lost all 45 of those bullets. Yeah, so you've got <laughs> to like, like use every single one of your bullets before you reload. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. In fact, I, cool. I don't really reload in classic mode. I, I just keep shooting until he automatically reloads because he gets down. Yeah, he does it himself. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I find out that on my second playthrough that you could use auto aim because I was I was doing pretty well like shooting without it but I realized that the Tommy gun because you're using so many bullets like I was using so many at one time without the auto aim and I'm like oh come on it's taking me so many bullets to kill this one person and then yeah. I used auto aim and it's like shoot and I moved the, the analog stick up the tiniest bit and hit him in the head I'm like I've used two bullets on my Tommy gun that's so good <laughs> <laughs> do you use um actually I like the shotgun for that reason do you use a shotgun on it um, I do if somebody's really annoying me and I just want to get out close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I use it, I usually switch to a shotgun if yeah, if I'm if I know that there's only one barrier between me and the bad guy and I just sort of go, Okay, let's use the shotgun here. I'm gonna just come around the corner and just boom, they're gone, they're done. What's your favorite? Have you got a favorite uh, level? Oh God. Um I have a lot that really annoy me, but um... <laughs> Oh, what? Which ones annoy you? That's what I want to know. People well, the there was this you. moment, like the the one where you assassinate, or what's his name, the guy on the boat through the prison. Oh no! Then, oh, on the boat. Yeah, yeah, on the boat. Yeah, and then it's like I don't know if it's because on normal, but I just felt like I couldn't run past anyone if I get in like shot to hell, and I'm like, just calm down, let me run past. And it's like we have, we have Polly and Sam in the background. Come on, Tommy, you've got the boat. Jump on! I'm yeah. like, I can't. I physically I can't. can't. <laughs> well, you need to kill him. You need to kill him. That's the whole. You got to kill him first. 
I know, but they always beat me to it. <laughs> they always first. <laughs> Are you too nice? Are you too nice? You don't like killing people? <laughs> no, honestly, I can be, I can be evil in games. Like, <laughs> I oh, know man. that in, in The Last of Us, especially Last of Us Part 2, after like, I don't know if you've played it, but I imagine you know what happens in the game. Or do you? In which game is it? The Last of Us Part 2. Oh, The Last of Us. No, I saw it. I know of the game. I don't know what it's about. Okay, so like Ellie, the main character, goes through this big trauma and then she has to start killing people. And people are very questionable questionable with her actions. Whereas I'm like, I completely understood. I was with her. I want to kill every single motherfucker around. And whenever you got like, ex- you get like explosive bullets for shotguns and you get like um, arrows with explosives right. and stuff on them. And like, there's a, a cheat that or a game modifier that you've got where you can um, have unlimited ammo. Whereas in The Last of Us, normally it, you have to like literally scavenge for it. And whenever I have unlimited ammo, I'm just using the explosive arrows for everything, just watching people blow up and I'm just oddly satisfied. <laughs> is, is it because it's just because they explode and so that's pretty cool so you just want to see them explode or well it's because like it's so detailed like you see all the body parts exploding as well and i'm like oh you really pissed me off i'm glad i did that <laughs> yeah I, I actually um it's interesting here's another fun fact i was actually at e3 in los angeles you know what e3 is yeah uh, yeah so you know convention yeah i think it's basically the biggest gaming convention in the world or at least one of them and um and I used to go to it pretty much every year for about, I think, four years before I got um, Mafia. But um, I, the day that I had my audition was the same day I was at E3, and it was the first time I'd seen a Last of Us um, trailer. And I was oh, looking wow. at it. It was, on, it was on this massive screen, and I'm like, oh, my God, look at the detail in that. It looks amazing. Yeah, and actually it was the same year that they released... Um, uh what's that is it death stranding or something death, death stranding yeah death stranding yeah and i got to meet the creator who's like a god amongst gods apparently um for gaming um the japanese guy, uh, yeah that guy <laughs> yeah oh so god. he was there yeah 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 wow. um that's crazy and- yeah, and I just I saw the the trailer for that as well. It was like this whole teaser. It was a big release of, of E3 at that in that year, um, which must have been eighteen, I think. No, seven, seven, eighteen. I think it was eighteen. I think it was eighteen. Yeah. Hmm. Because that, that was the year I auditioned for Mafia, and that was the year came, they, they were doing this teaser. They released it at E3, and so the media were just going crazy for it because they're like, "Oh my God, this God's latest," you know creation <laughs> and, and I think um, I played a little and, bit of Death Stranding too I think I need to get back into that have you played it I played a little yeah. bit of it and um, okay. I think uh, like all the memes are true it's kind of like a walking simulator for a bit because you are just running about delivering stuff but then um ah. and I did kind of lose interest until you meet Troy Baker's character he's like the big bad villain and I'm like oh yeah. this is exciting <laughs> awesome Awesome. Yeah, no, I'd see. And this is the thing, like, this is why I keep adding video games that I have to try because I would just want to play all the games that I, of people I know, like the friends, mm-hmm. my friends have made, you know, so Death Stranding and Red Dead Redemption. And um, I keep wanting to say Black Ops. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but um, yeah, so yeah, I've got a lot of video gaming to do. <laughs> which is not going to help me be very productive in life because <laughs> I'm not good at controlling it. Once I start, I can't put it down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, um, I was talking to somebody the other day and she, when she mentioned this, I felt like I had to stop your Instagram when I saw this, but um, you did a lot of traveling or you still do, well, maybe not so much now, but you did a lot of traveling. <laughs> yeah, no. not, um, not, when not, was your not favorite place? December 19th. Where was your favorite place to go, or where was your favorite place that you visited? Wow. Okay, I'd say top of the list because I love scuba diving and snorkeling and paradise would be Bora Bora in French Polynesia. Wow. Which is near Tahiti. Yeah. Um, it was weird because I was <laughs> I was by myself, surrounded by 
you know, honeymooners. <laughs> it was really strange. Oh, yeah. I'm like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't be here. This is a little, a little <laughs> awkward. <laughs> it's like, why am I here that I'm the only one that's not on honeymoon? <laughs> but, um, oh my God. I mean, it's just like, if there's, if there's a heaven on earth, that is it. And wow. I, I haven't been to Maldives. I really want to, or Maldives or however you pronounce it. I uh, really want to go to that before it's underwater. But um, yeah, and obviously Australia has some beautiful spots and there's some that I haven't been to um, that I really want to go to. Um, but I've done the Barrier Reef. I've done Exmouth. But I love scuba diving. Yeah. So the last place other than America that I went to was um, Cuba. Very nice. Yeah. And when I was in Cuba, it's weird because Cuba doesn't have a lot, like, internet is kind of hard to find in Cuba. Mm -hmm. So they basically have dial up speed and it's only available as Wi-Fi in the local square. So all the locals gather in the, in the square in the town, which in its, in a way is, is kind of cool because it brings people together, but then they end up ignoring each other because they're on the internet. Um, but that's the only place you can kind of get internet. And so I just thought I was in Cuba for three weeks. It was like going back in time. And I just thought, no, I don't think I need to do internet like screw it I'll just enjoy life without it and remember what it was like before smartphones and wi-fi um, which was wonderful and um, I noticed that people were starting I started to notice people dropping in the streets and there was a woman when I when I was leaving this is December 2019 so you can imagine what I'm about to talk about oh my God. um yeah, so it was just as COVID was being discovered for the world. And when I got on the plane, there was a woman waiting. This is on for the international flight to leave Cuba to go back to the States. And there was a woman who collapsed in the airport and she looked deathly ill. And some paramedics came and got her. Next thing I know, they're wheelchairing her onto my flight. <gasps> And she was about three rows behind me on the other side of the plane. And I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know if they're supposed to be putting sick people on planes, especially if they can't walk because they're so sick. Anyway, at this point, I'd never even heard of COVID. Meanwhile, the rest of the world is just starting to hear about it. But I didn't have internet, so I had no idea what was going on in the rest of the world. Wow. Got back to America, heard about COVID, was sick, bedridden for about four days. And I've never been tested for antibodies, but I wouldn't be surprised if I've already had it. So oh I don't know. God. But it was the strangest experience because out of all the traveling, I've been to about 33, 35, I don't know, kind of lost count now, but um, different countries. The only time that I've ever witnessed people collapsing in the street and being rushed off in a car was in Cuba. Wow. And I thought maybe it was dengue fever or something from the mosquitoes. So I was freaked out by mosquitoes. I was just drenching myself in, in DEET um, so that mosquitoes didn't bite me because I was worried about getting dengue fever. Then I get back to the States and discover this thing called COVID. Interesting. Oh, that's bizarre. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, I remember when I was really young, I'm talking, I must have been about five or something. Me and my mum my dad and my young my older brother sorry we went to Dominican Republic for a holiday and the resort, oh, wow. was, the resort was beautiful like I have no fault on that but it was discovered I don't know if it was that resort or like this one particular area that we were staying but there was feces in like the the running water and mm -hmm. every single person in that hotel got sick and I don't mean like just like vomiting and like shit and I mean they were collapsing there was a huge line outside the doctor and I vividly remember one woman fainting and like this guy go get the fucking doctor and I'm like oh my I was like what the hell's going on oh my and god having, and I'm having to drink like the, these weird um I don't even know what they were they're just weird juices that were like meant to help your stomach or something. I don't know, but it was so unusual. Oh, I was did fine. Do they have ginger uh, in them? Hmm? It, were they um, like ginger and coconut? The juices? I think it was like, it looks like just like fruit juice, not like, um, like, mm, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know what you'd call it in Australia, but um, mm. it looks like a kind of squash, like a diluted drink. Whereas, it just tasted disgusting. And I remember 
my dad mixing it with Sprite and that was the first time I ever tried Sprite. <laughs> Uh, it's so stupid that's such a nice memory in a way because I, I love Sprite now but <laughs> um, my my mum hasn't been the same since like she has appetite of a sparrow now and she's like really she just gets really unwell after she eats so I'm like and she's like okay hey, my tummy has never been the same since um Dominican Republic and I don't think I'll ever come back for that one experience so I was like no, how long ago was that oh lord I must have been um five six and I'm 23 now so <laughs> quite a long time wow. ago but yeah, I can wow. I can understand if you're if you'd be shaken by that like I wouldn't want to yeah I mean look I've had my fair share of um like food poisoning and stuff actually when I was in Galway it's interesting you talk about the feces in the water um I was in Galway in 2007 and we were told to if we were going to have a shower keep your mouth closed um <gasps> because <laughs> the sewage was seeping over into, and this was the whole city. The whole city was told, don't drink the water out of the tap. And they, were, they had all these facilities where you could just go and fill your water up with clean water because the tap, like, and, and it was, they, I don't know how long it took them to fix it, but the whole city was basically had um, sewage leaking over into their, into their water supply, oh which is pretty, pretty gross. But I didn't get sick, so that's good because I was only drinking that's... clean water. I wasn't drinking <laughs> out of the tap water. <laughs> yeah, and like you know, when you when you brush your teeth, you should just use bottled water. Don't use the water in the tap. Yeah, don't use tap yeah, water. <laughs> but you learn these things the hard way, don't you? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, Morocco think... and Egypt and Mexico and Peru, all those places. They're, they're all places I've been where I wouldn't brush my teeth with the tap water. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Let, let, let alone drink it. <laughs> I think it's so... They're back. <laughs> Hi. I, I think it's so funny because um, I'm looking back at how badly I want to go back to Italy. Like when I, I knew oh. I was speaking to you, I got so excited because I was like, oh, we could tell stories about Italy and things like that. And I was like, well, maybe not. I don't know. But um, Where have you been? Um. I think it's more in the north I've been to. I've been to Venice, Verona, Milan, and Lake Garda. Okay, I've and, been to Venice and Milan, but I haven't been to the other two. I mean, I didn't really like Milan, in my own opinion. Sorry, Milan people. But I think it was just too, too city-like for me, if that makes sense. Oh, the very modern city. Yeah, yeah. You can tell it's one of the, like, it's got that whole fashion capital of the world kind of vibe going on I actually was lucky because my aunt lived there when I went um she lives in a small town further south now but um and my cousins grew up there so they gave me the locals experience which was pretty awesome, awesome. Um, but if you didn't have that local experience I can understand why you'd feel the way you felt about it yeah I went um I went with my school we did a performing arts um trip I guess you can say we made a play while we were um while we were staying in a hotel in like Garda we just made up a random play and we had to perform it in like this not like a proper amphitheater but it was like a a bit where they do perform on like a, a mini stage and where it's kind of surround sound echo. hang on did did we just discover that you do acting is that is that what you're telling us um I've not in a while I mean I went to acting college um a couple of years ago and I had to leave my job temporarily for that because just because the way the, the timing worked out and I just couldn't afford it. So I couldn't stay. Ah. And ironically, it was Red Dead Redemption that inspired me to get back into acting. And that's why I joined acting school. Really? And, yeah. And, Wait, um, where, whereabouts do you live? Which part of the UK? Uh, Fife. Fife. Ah, okay. Okay. Because I have, I have an ex-girlfriend who studied at a very respected acting school, and I think it was in Edinburgh. She was Scottish. Oh. Is there a great school there? That's um, because one of her. I, I think one of one, the. I know there's a really popular one in Glasgow, and that's like proper, like prestigious. And oh, um, maybe that's what it was. Because she was saying that two. I think it was two of her classmates ended up in Lord of the Rings as some of the hobbits. Two of the hobbits. Oh wow. Yeah. Two I know. Of the, I allegedly, think it was allegedly, you're, you and McGregor went to our college. And that's where I did acting. 
Okay. And I don't know if it was like him at like 16 or something doing like this random course or if it actually was acting, but I'm like, I'd like to think it was acting that he was doing. That'd be really cool. He's, he's a great guy. He's a really nice guy. I had a chance to meet him once very, very briefly, but he was just very unassuming. He wasn't like, oh, look at me, I'm Ewan McGregor. He was just so cool and just so mm. normal guy and easy to talk to. Yeah, he was a nice bloke. Even I, though I, we were at the- I would genuinely love to get back into acting again. Um, mm. I mean, I've got a microphone. I don't have a proper computer to like use. That's why I do all my interviews on my phone because I don't really know what to use. Um and hey, I wouldn't mind trying VA stuff, but I just love theater acting, if that makes sense. I just, I yeah. love that whole thing more. Okay. I think so just being is it more... I love it. Yeah, there's, there's a couple, couple of things about that. Like I, I would ask you, is it, is it more because you get to tell a story from start to finish? It's sort of more chronological and you get to immerse yourself in it yeah. totally from beginning to end as opposed to TV or film where you- I guess so, you know, I mean- The last scene and then the first scene and then the middle or whatever. Same with musical theatre as well, because I like singing and some people have said I'm all right at it, but um, I hate posting covers on social media because I get really scared and anxious and I'm like, no, I delete it after like two minutes. But um, when it comes to like musical theatre, people say that I'm good at emoting in a song and I'm like, okay, that's good. That's the main right. thing. But yeah. at the time, I'm like, can I sing though? <laughs> I don't know. Do you, do you um, have you ever tried like, when you sing, have there been times where you've broken down in tears while you're singing? Or has that not really happened? Well, like if I'm singing, it's really hard to sing. And I'm mouthing along to a song, and then yeah. like the, the message gets to me that's I'm like, ah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, like the final speech for uh, Tommy in the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I don't know how, like, this is another thing as well. I don't cry at movies. I'll say that point blank. I can't really? do it. I can't write a film. But when it comes to a video game, I don't know if it's because you've played with this character for so many hours. I mean, you've gotten yeah. to know him in your own personal way. So that's why when Tommy's you... doing that ending speech and you know what's going to happen if you played it already, then that's why I was like, oh, no, no. Don't cry yeah. in the garden today. Your, plant, your plants will be watered. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's, that's why I love that line about um, it's okay, you're safe now. You know, it's like, oh. he, he, it's not so bad that, yeah, it's like, how awesome is that, that he's just gone, okay, finally, I can rest in peace because mm-hmm. I know that my family is going to be okay because they didn't touch my family, they just killed me. Great. I'm, I'm happy with that. Like, that's the best case scenario I could possibly ask for. Yeah, I think something that um, I was reading like comments and some people were mixed on it. I think some people were like, why did he say yes that way? And I'm like, he said yes, because he knew, like he knew what was going to happen. Yeah. So the thing, the thing that I was hoping to, I mean, it's hard to bring across with just one word. Yes. But the fact that they said his name, because he's in hiding. He doesn't go by Tommy Angelo. Yeah, he doesn't go by Tommy Angelo. the, The second that someone comes up behind him and says Thomas Angelo, he's like, this is it. I know what's happening. Because no one's ever called him Tommy. Like they haven't called him Tommy since Don the Don got put in jail. And that and he got put in prison like, you know, 20, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like 30 years before that. So yeah, the fact that someone's calling him his real name, that's when he goes, Ah, okay. I know this is the day I've been waiting for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. So did you have any idea that Tommy was going to die? Like, was that something that was known to you or? Oh, wow. Um, did I? It's, that was the tough thing about shooting this compared to shooting something like TV or film or theatre, is that usually with TV, film and theatre, you get given the whole script and you know where your character starts, where they finish and what mm-hmm. happens in the middle. I've heard this, this before, script, you get it in blocks. Yeah, we get it in blocks and they're very secretive about it. So, and like I was saying before, as, as with TV and film, you don't shoot in chronological order. So there's things that, that ended up making it to the final cut of the game that I was a bit disappointed about for my own performance. Cause I'm like, ah, man, if I'd known that they 
that they got him, you know, actually, if you look at the, which, which um, I think it's the second, it's when you're running through the streets in the second, is it the second? I think it's the second uh, Oh, the level, running right? man, the second mission. Yeah, running man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and and he uh, and he gets beaten up at the beginning of it, and then he makes a run for it, and then he goes mm-hmm. to meet the Don, right? Yeah. Um, there's specific like for an actor, you, you you be very specific about when someone beats you up. Like if they break your jaw or they break your your rib or whatever, you get to the next scene, you bring that into the next scene. But because we hadn't shot the beat up before we shot the scene, oh, okay. I didn't know where Tommy was hurting and where he wasn't. So I actually didn't even know he'd just been beaten up, really. So I, if you look at the scene where Tommy meets the Don, he doesn't look like he's in pain at all. Pretty nonchalant, yeah. He's, he's yeah. just walking so in I didn't with his hat. Like. Yeah, and he's kind of angry, but he's not in pain. And clearly he would be in pain because he's just yeah, had he the crap <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's the little things like that where you go, you know, if if you were given the whole script, you'd bring that to your performance. But I didn't get that opportunity. So did you get any thing. kind of like description that like Tommy did get beaten up, or was it just Tommy's car got smashed and now you're running to the dawn? Is that all you got? Yeah, I didn't really. Yeah, I mean, I think they. Oh, look, you're testing my memory now. I might, I might have known. <laughs> I definitely didn't know that in the scene. I, I definitely, I think I knew, I knew that he'd been beaten up when, when he finally gets to the part where he's like trying to get his breath back and he's talking to Paulie and Sam and then, and then Paulie and Sam, and Paulie goes, uh, brings out a, a, a pump action and he goes, oh, let's, I can't remember his line. What's his line? Um, oh, um. Or maybe oh, he went like, something like that. Like, yeah, he, he had such a great line. And so they walk away and they're like, we'll see you around, you know, kind of thing. And then I go out to meet the Don. Okay, so that was shot. That and the beat up scene were all shot after we'd already shot the scene where I meet the Don. So That's weird. Yeah, so all of the stuff where, um, where I get beaten up and where um, I, I find... Uh, Paulie and Sam and I'm puffing because I've just been running through the streets and thinking I'm about to die. None of that. I knew none of that when I got to meet the Don in that scene, when we shot the scene with the Don. I had no idea that any of that stuff came before. All right. Nice. I, I knew that, obviously I knew the cab was destroyed, but I didn't realise how much detail came with that. I think as well, like going back to what drew Tommy into that life, I think um, something that I've said in that in that video that I was telling you about, um, I've said that um, he Tommy worked on road crews for such a long period of time. I'm talking seven years on a road crew where he worked yeah. away, he saved up all that money, and then he used that money over seven years to buy a cab. And then yeah. after that one mission with Polly and Sam, you've basically you made that up one night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> That's oh yeah, you mean when the when the Don apologizes and said, "Will this be enough?" Oh yeah, when when um sorry when Sam comes out and goes, oh, "This should be enough to cover your damage to the cab." And if anyone asks about the damage to your cab, you swerve to hit from to, to miss hitting a little old lady or something, and it's like and it's like the levels <laughs> over it. <laughs> yeah, it's like did the little old lady have a Tommy gun because there's a lot of blood holes <laughs> in the damn car. <laughs> it's like. Jesus, what kind of a little old lady was he swerving to miss? <laughs> she was gangster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway. Oh but I mean, just, yeah, going back to the language, uh, man, just saying things like, um, uh, actually, I, I wrote it in a comment the other day and it just came into my head and I don't even know, if I don't think it made the cut in the final edit of the game where I go, um, you're treading into enemy territory without a map. He's like, watch it, buddy. You're treading into enemy territory without a map. Does that? I don't think that's that, in the that game. That's a good saying, though, because it's like you're walking into the lion's den. You don't know what you're walking into. Yeah. Yeah, so it actually happens. It's, it's a conversation between Tommy and Paulie where Paulie's talking about, he mentions something about Sarah, and that's obviously Tommy. That's a trigger, yeah. He's like, don't talk about my girl, right? 
So he goes, you know, watch it, buddy. You, you're threatening enemy territory without a map. Like, don't talk about my lady or you don't know what's going to happen, like kind of thing. So, Ooh. yeah, it's a great that little line. But, <laughs> yeah, but other lines like, I took a bolt to the shoulder, but he's a tough blocker. He and his crew dusted out as soon as we bumped off Morello's hatchet, man. You know, like that kind of language or like the, the wooden overcoats, all that kind of stuff. It's so cool. I love it. I still, what the hell does that mean? I still don't know what that means. Wooden overcoats? Oh, wooden overcoats. Yeah, that's, that's, a, um, that's a coffin. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you saps not careful, you're going to end up in wooden overcoats. Or well, not gonna, not gonna, going to. <laughs> as much as I want to say gonna end up in wooden overcoats, you're going to end up in wooden overcoats. So a wooden overcoat is like, you're going to end up in a coffin because I'm going to kill you. Oh, okay, now I get it, right, okay. That's, yeah, that's what he means. I didn't realise, but... Yeah. Well, like when he sees Michelle, what's the, uh, what's the line about... Um... The, oh, yeah, if you ever show your face in this town again, they're going to find you with two in the head, you understand? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. like two in the head, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just cool stuff like that. There, cool. there was a, a moment, and it's when you were... Is it Carvel they were chasing around in the... Um, and, Don's like, is he dead? And I'm like, I'm not, he's like, I'm not sure. And then that's when he starts stamping on it. And I was like, oh, two in the head. And then he just immediately started stamping on it. <laughs> or that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, actually, if you look at, if you look at that scene um, at the end of uh, the death of Art, when Tommy finally kills Sam. So he, he shoots Jesus him in Christ. the torso. And then when it zooms out, he shoots him twice in the head. Right, in the head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's smartly done as well because that was the lesson he did learn from the dawn. It's like you have yeah. to shoot them to the head. That's how you do. It. You know they're dead. Like, oh. The the other interesting thing that they do in the game is if you look at some of the goriest parts of it, like when um, Morello is beating up um, Joey Crackers, the boxer. Yeah. And he's literally beating him to death with a tire iron um, <laughs> in the street in front of the police. Um, but if you notice the camera pulls back so it's it's you're further away so they it creates distance it, between no. yeah and like when when don uh, salieri um beats or basically crunches his head in um uh what's his name after they go to the restaurant um oh and then uh, they... it's carlo though right carlo carlo yeah yeah so so we go and kill carlo well the don basically crunches his head with his foot uh, with his heel and they zoom out for that as well and then when Tommy kills Morello and fills him with bullets from head to toe they zoom out for that as well yeah. that's very I think that's really smartly done because it's like it's kind of like what you would see in like a a 30s gangster flick because like obviously there's only so much that they can show in a film back in those days yeah yeah like I, I watched um, a documentary about Psycho and Psycho's my favorite movie and um, really yeah and you're it's a good like, taste, girl. oh see somebody agrees with me <laughs> and <laughs> it's like from the stabbing noises to like stabbing a watermelon to like um they weren't allowed to show a toilet on screen and so that was really, really controversial yeah they weren't they weren't um not that they weren't allowed to it just wasn't right just wasn't to do done. so but hitchcock was like but no but we need to toilet in the scene and i'm like okay whatever <laughs> in a bathroom it has, to, it has to have a toilet yes it's true yeah. <laughs> but i think, <laughs> just I think it does make sense to not show like the the grotesque moments because that's like how you would do it in a in a gangster flick in like the 30s when that was set i think that makes a lot of sense yeah. and i like that i think that's really smartly done but i also have a lot of respect for filmmakers who when crazy shit happens in their films they don't actually show it but they just have a way of making a film where you it's kind of that old idea of like um, what you imagine in your head is always going to be worse than something that we can create oh yeah. you know what i mean yeah so it's it's like leave it up to the audience to decide how grotesque or how horrible that situation was let's just infer what's happening i have a lot of respect for that i don't have to see the gore and the blood and the guts and stuff um, if you do it in, in the right way and it gets my brain thinking and I go, oh, my God, I think it's worse that I didn't see that. I think it's actually worse. That's mm -hmm. when you know it's been well made. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like back to The Last of Us Part 2 and Ellie's trauma, like that, 
one particular moment this person was getting beaten to death of a golf club and um it we watched every single part like every single hit strike and then <sighs> the last ball that cracked his skull open like yeah i'm sitting there like this with my controller going i need to switch this off i won't be able to sleep for about a month and this is a character yeah, yeah. That, uh, that i love that this happened to and i'm like <sighs> I, I don't want to play the rest of this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's interesting that you talk about Psycho with that because, yeah, like you said, I mean, the, you never see the knife actually go into her skin. It's all... Yeah, they like, kind of just you show see, shots. You see the knife on the, on the upward and it's on the downward, you know, kind of, but you never actually see it go into the body, which is good. Yeah, it's always like it's kind of next to her stomach or it's next to her chest but it's never like protruding into her body yeah yeah he, he really was cool. very clever i'm surprised it was so people don't agree with you that psycho is one of the best films ever made yeah i i said to somebody like um those people I said, my favorite film and they're like that's the worst film ever i'm like what the hell have you smoked <laughs> I, like, I, have um... a, I have a norman bates funko up there <laughs> Do you? I, can't, I can't tell with the uh... yeah the quality of the video is not good enough to ah no way Norman so, Bates. it's absolutely covered in dust I need to dust up there but um have you yeah, watched the TV um... show Bates Motel <gasps> yes I had a lot of feelings to that at first like when they I've said ne I've never seen it so one of the the arcs that they have is that um um Norman has a brother and I from the beginning I was like hold on that doesn't make any sense like um because I've watched there's more than one cycle movie there's four cycle movies and I've watched all four of them and I think it's I very clear that. that that his mother wouldn't have another kid I think that's I think she just loved to torture Norman and that one child is enough um yeah absolutely <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, so they, they made it that he had a brother, an older brother, and I was like, oh, for, no, no, I don't like this. But as soon as that brother walked through the door, I was like, okay, I'm on board. You can stay as long as you want. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> it's actually oh, pretty well done. Like, even the shower scene, it's, they include the shower scene in it, but it's completely different. Like, it's not Marion that dies, it's Sam. And I feel like that's, it's different, but it's actually really well done. Like, Right. Really yeah, see, I haven't, yeah, I haven't seen any of that. I didn't did know there was a multiple. Or was it both? I, I don't it's, know. As long, it's as been long that long since get, I watched it. <laughs> as long as they didn't end up on the wall as taxidermists. <laughs> like, they'd be <laughs> taxidermists. It's like, all oh, right, here's, here's my stuffed victim number one. Here's my stuffed victim number two. <laughs> I feel like that would be a completely different film, though, if they did it like yeah, that. I think you were right. Yeah, That'd decorating my mother's house. That would type thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my God. What a great film that is, too. Did they I've have actually not seen that. I've actually not seen it. You haven't seen it? No. Oh, my God. That is... That is classic. That's, you can't live life without seeing that girl. Come on. That's what I know. My mum's even said the same. She's like, you need to watch it. Are you going to be disowned? <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. No, you got to see it. Shawshank Redemption? Uh, no, not, not either. <laughs> okay, see that first. That's, I mean, for me, that's close to I've as perfect as a film can get. I've definitely heard of it. I feel like I know what it is, but I, I don't know. I've not sat and watched it myself. Tim Robbins, Morgan Freeman, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, the script's amazing. The cinematography is amazing. Direction, performance. I mean, it's as close to perfect as what I think, personally. I mean, it's all art. It's open to interpretation. But what I think a, a film can get, the, there's, I mean, the ending is satisfying. Everything's great about it. It's so freaking good. So freaking good. I think, and I'm not alone. Most people say it's their favorite film. So I think with um again me and movies, I'm like it's say with Red Dead, obviously I've spent like 80 plus hours playing with Arthur and then like getting into that kind of Western life. That's when I started to watch like Clint Eastwood movies and John Wayne films, and I was like, okay, I can really absorb myself into this. And then, but I played Mafia, so I'm like, okay, I better watch The Godfather and all these other movies because I hadn't seen those yep. yet. 
but I don't know what it was but I just I felt like I just wasn't paying attention I was just kind of like this one scene is taking forever and I don't know why I don't like it but somebody actually said to me you have to dedicate your whole mind to that film you have to watch it you can't just sit there with your phone and have it and just keep looking at your messages you have to focus on that movie to get yourself immersed that's why I hate watching movies with my brother because he's always on his phone. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you just missed the most important part of the storyline. And without that, the whole film's not going to make sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, just focus just for like an hour and a half, two hours. That's all you got to do. Just put down the phone, please. <laughs> I think like what happened was I was, I just played Mafia and I was just talking about it. And then I was saying, okay, next I'm watching The Godfather. So I took a photo of like the opening card for my Instagram and then obviously I was on Instagram so I was scrolling through it like for ages and I kept looking up going this wedding is still happening Jesus Christ like <laughs> I hadn't paid attention yeah it's interesting that wedding scene I mean it just sets up so much of the culture it's really yeah very important it's good like oh I owe, you know it's, it's all this stuff about respect and owing each other like uh, you owe me this, I owe you this, you know, oh, you're going to do this on your daughter's wedding day because it's your daughter's wedding day, so you have to, you like, all this kind of crazy stuff. Wow. It's pretty awesome. There's some great tradition stuff in it. Yeah. I love that. I was going to ask as well, did you, um, you said, was it your, it's just your family in general that are Sicilian or your parents Sicilian? Yeah, so it's actually my dad's side. Um, believe it or not, there's some Scottish in there. I was uh, named after my great-great-grandfather who was um, Andrew McCallum. Andrew oh, McCallum. Very interesting. yeah. Just a little bit, yeah. I've actually got the, um, I've got um, the coat of arms somewhere. I, I've got it up on my mantle, actually. You, you showed me a photo of that, yeah. Oh, I did, yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, and, uh, and then mum's side is English-Irish. Oh, that's cool. Um, I so in the, in the winter, I'm... In the winter, I'm white as a sheet, and in the summer, I'm like olive. Oh, <laughs> I go <cute>. olive. Yeah. <laughs> the Australian funny, summer gets me very Because I look back, and I don't know if you saw my photo of my grand that I put, because I lost my grand um, five years ago yesterday. And oh. um, I looked Sorry. back on it, and she, her father, so I think in World War One, he immigrated from, I don't know what part of Italy, but he immigrated from there to Aberdeen, where he had my grandmother. And um, so that's where my Italianness lies. But um, it's oh, really? Because um, we, my grandma's name was Gemma, but we, um, her full name was Jemima Jopa. <laughs> what was it? Jemima, Jemima Jopa. Jopa, like J O P A. I think that's how. You, yeah, I think so. I'm not entirely sure. All right. Yeah, that sounds quite Italian, Jopa. And I, I looked it up and then it's, they're saying it's German and I was like, no, it's Italian because my dad didn't say they were Italian when they weren't. But apparently there's an area in Edinburgh and it was, and it's called Jopa and that's full of Italians. So I feel like I really need to go there and find out more. But, right. but I'm oh, looking wow. back at the photo of her and I've always looked at her having darker skin. So I think she's always had the olive skin and like the dark hair and I'm like, she really is like this Italian little granny, but she was Scottish as they come, so. Wow. No, I love that. Oh, man, I loved travelling through Scotland. It was so amazing. And the Isle of Skye as well. Uh, well, I was at the Edinburgh Festival. I've been to the Edinburgh Festival three oh, times. Love the French. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the third time I got to perform there, I was flown there by the Australian Shakespeare Company to do Midsummer Night's Dream, which was amazing to be there for that. Um, but the first two times I was just there as a spectator to see all the amazing performances. Um, Tim Minchin, I went to see, <gasps> you know. I fucking yeah, so, love Tim Minchin. All right, do you want a story about that? Yes. <laughs> Tim, Tim Minchin. So when I went to acting school, Tim Minchin was at university at the time and he used to play piano as an accompanist for us. And he used to have a regular gig. I can't remember. I think it might have been like a Thursday or a Wednesday night or something at a local pub playing piano. And we would all go there. And he was such a bloody good pianist pianist, that he could just sight read whatever. So 
So you'd take your own music and it was like karaoke with Tim Minchin and he'd play the piano for you and you'd sing. It's <laughs> oh, it was so cool. He says himself, though, he can't read the dots. He can't read them. I don't know if he's, he's lying there, but um, yeah. Well, I think, I think he just gets an idea of the shape of the music and he can just play it. Like, he's amazing. Honestly. Yeah, he's just amazing. He's I, just on another level. It's so funny. I think I started to get into his music when I was about 12, like his comedic stuff. So this shows the age difference between me and my brother. Like when I, when he was 18, I was like 13. And he was like, right. okay, you have to watch this. And he's like laughing at all the dirty jokes. And I'm like, what does that mean? And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> now um, I'm watching it. Um, I went to see him oh, at his most recent tour. I think it's like last year, the year before. And um, <laughs> yeah. and I think, um, been, I think he's been stuck in Australia. Oh, it might have been the beginning of the last year, maybe. Yeah, and it, it was about yeah. about 10 years or something. I'd been listening to his music by this point. And um, I remember she played uh, Prejudice. And my God, I fuck it, I love that song. <laughs> and then there's a moment, and I was like, yeah, you can call a smash stick or tampon. And he went quiet and everyone was silent. And I screamed, tampon. And he was like, tampon. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> He's like, have I got no real fans in the audience? <laughs> like he was laughing as well. I'm like, I made him laugh. <laughs> that's great. Good work. Good work. Nah, he's a good bloke. He's, yeah, um, that's that's wild. He, that's his performance at um because I I had no idea what he was gonna do for his because that was before he became a big celebrity in the UK. And in fact, I didn't even know he ended up becoming a celebrity in the UK until I went back three years later to do the Midsummer Night Stream performance at the Edinburgh Festival and he showed up at the Edinburgh Festival and he was this huge star and I'm like Tim what's what the hell's going on and he goes oh yeah that's a, I've had some good luck and I'm like oh okay and I found out that the woman who was running the uh one of the venues where he was performing which ironically became the venue that I performed at three years later um she had a lot of connections in London and um, introduced him to a lot of people. And obviously from there, he, he I mean, he, he's an amazing talent. How could you not just think, okay, this guy's a superstar. Like he's amazing. Um, I remember his, his performance at the Edinburgh Festival started with an invisible drum kit. And he was yes. sitting, was yeah, and he was sitting on stage. So dark, yeah. It was so freaking good. You're like, how, oh, what, so how is how is this drum kit invisible? Like he just believed there was a drum kit there. It was so incredible. He did such a great job. Yeah, he's a talented, talented mofo. My God, I think that's that's just made my day that you've said that you you like you know to mention and you like him and then you've just made me so happy for this whole interview. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been fun. It's yeah, been fun. Um, I don't really know how to leave it here because I feel like we've been speaking forever. <laughs> Yeah, um, how long have we, I mean, we've just got carried away, didn't we? What time is it? Oh, wow. Oh, hour and a half. Nice work. Look at us. Oh, that's, that's actually the longest I've ever got an interview. <laughs> really good. Um, but I like that. I like how we just naturally had a conversation. Like, I, I have questions in front of me, but I never seem to go off them anymore. I think um, it's more natural and it's nicer that way to kind of just chat. Um, yeah, for sure. Sorry, I went so, on a rant a few times. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm asked questions and I'm like, I think of this and I think of that. And I think of that. So I'm aware of <laughs> um, So are you working on anything that you can share that's upcoming? Uh, I uh, just finished something um, that is weird because it was shot in Australia, but it's American production. Um, but no, that's, that's all I can say. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> So um, <laughs> is, there, is there anything you want to say to the people watching, not just Mafia fans, but in general? Um, I would probably say um, get into the hooch. If you like the hooch, if you don't like the hooch, get into something else. War is good, but hooch is better. Love that. <laughs> so, well, thank you so much. Hold on. I shall stop this recording.